Hans, we need to talk. What about Nick? The Final Fantasy VII Remake demo dropped the other day, and both of us have had the chance to play it. Yes, it's free. Yes, well, most demos are. It's a timed exclusive on PS4. I don't think that's confirmed yet. I saw IGN put something about it, so I am almost certain it might be. See, I would be, I fully expect it to be like, all right, it'll come out on PS4, and then they'll re-release it on the PS5, and then when it re-releases on the PS5, they will also put it out on PC. Gotta milk them fanboys. I do not need the mental image of someone milking Alex, but Do you, do you know what a milky, milking table is? Yes, I actually do, unfortunately. Okay, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> All them fanboys up on a milking table. Gross. That's my friend's favourite subreddit. Mm. It's our, our milking table. <laughs> so, the Final Fantasy VII Remake demo. Huh? <laughs> no milking tables in the demo. <laughs> God, that Just put that out there. <laughs> Nick, what is the Final Fantasy VII Remake demo? <laughs> Hans, the Final Fantasy VII Remake is the long-awaited uh, remake of the classic, one of the most popular games of all time, Final mm. Fantasy VII. Finally coming to the PS4 after being talked about for a long time now. Uh, it's finally coming out in May? Uh, something I like think. that. I think it was originally meant to come out in like March or April and it's been delayed yeah. to May. Something like that. And yeah, I'm excited. Um, I had been excited before, like after all the stuff they'd shown in like the like E3s and Sony press conferences before it. They, it looks amazing. It does look mm. top notch. Uh, it looked top notch. And the Bits of the combat they had shown off in those trailers, I think, looked cool. Very Kingdom Hearts, Final Fantasy XV-esque in the way it works. And so what this demo is, it is the first part of the game, the iconic mission where you blow up the um, Mako reactor. Mako, sorry. Mm-hmm. I always thought it was Mako, but that has now been put to rest <laughs> since people actually speak in this game. The Mako reactor one. I don't, I, like, I don't even know where to begin with this, because like, this is one of the most probably high-profile games of all time. Yeah. Um, because people have been wanting this for pretty much ever since the PS2 came out. They wanted a mm-hmm. remake of Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. Um, and there are some massive changes because mm-hmm. it, it's not just a, a remake in terms of I was just like a neat any prettier skin on it. Like this is clearly their chance to um show just how different it's going to mm-hmm. be from the original. Um, so let's launch in and talk about the big difference which is the gameplay yeah so well i feel like yeah it's probably important to know, yes this is actually like a full-on from the ground up remake this is not yeah. like oh we've just replaced all the models in the original game and prettied up the backgrounds this is completely different in every way it's third person perspective real-time combat completely voiced changes to the story they will be doing like there's already slight changes to how the whole reactor thing plays out yeah, that was actually cool. We'll get that a bit later, yeah. But yes, as you mentioned, the gameplay. I mentioned before it was similar in vain to completely ditching the sort of turn-based combat that was in the original, more in favor of something like a Final Fantasy XV with you actually individually control each A character while your other ones are AI controlled. And you can you have free attacks, you then can cast spells. They've incorporated the active time battle stuff that was in the original by... Er- Gradually, it fills over time and increases faster if you do attacks, but then whenever you fill in a portion of your uh, active time gauge, you can freeze time and issue a command, and these commands are typically stronger, like they're your magics, or in Claudius' case, he gets like his braver and things like that. Mm-hmm. And overall, I really liked how the combat played. It took a bit of getting used to, and I think there's certain things that are will take a bit of getting used to, in terms of like Cloud's animations and like being able to block on time for things. But overall, I was like really, really happy with how the gameplay turned out i would say it's not on it's decent but it seems like almost like a slightly slower version of final fantasy 15 I, th- I thought the fact that like the likes of braver and um thrust slash that they were special abilities was a bit weird considering mm. that the limit breaks are still in it did you read the description on cross slash in the menus no so cross slash is described as <laughs> You attack the foe and make an ominous symbol with your slashes. Cool. <laughs> and I was just like, the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> it's like fucking drawing the cool ass with his sword. 
The stagger system is a bit weird. Well, not weird, but it's a bit that, interesting. That was in 15 as well, wasn't yeah, it? Or something it was. similar was in it? Yeah. Um, I think I like, I, I like it, but I, I feel like there's too many layers to it. Because like, once you stagger them, so, sorry, you can either you can knock them down, mm-hmm. which isn't a stagger. Yeah. But when you knock them down, that makes it them easier to stagger. Yes. And then once they're staggered, that you can then do more damage. Yes. Um, I feel like it would just be easier if the stagger knocked them down, and then you can do more damage. I feel like the ability to knock them down but not stagger them is a bit but weird. The knock, I'd th- I'd kinda the knock, I, I kind of think the knockdown thing can be the idea. Like it's just a case of if you do something that like exploits an enemy's weakness, mm-hmm. then it. I think they put like call like it applies pressure to them or something like that. Yeah, and then that's when like all right, their stagger gauge will build up faster in this period. It's it, it just hit home with the first sweeper encounter. That's kind of when I was looking at it, and I was kind of like, right, that's a. It was just the one thing of the combat that didn't click yeah. fully with me. So the one thing I think that didn't really click with me, and I think it's maybe more of a case of getting used to it more than anything, is. The game is very, and it was similar in Kingdom Hearts and probably Final Fantasy as well, so I don't know why I'm not used to it yet, is it's very animation focused. So like, there's times where like, you'll swing Cloud Sword and be like, oh fuck, I need the block, but Cloud has to finish his animation and like, you can't cancel out of his attack if it hasn't hit yet. I was trying to like, probably mash more than they, like you're probably meant to, mm-hmm. and I meant I was probably getting hit a lot more and not blocking at times. They do a good job with the combat, like I think, um... <sighs> I was kind of sitting there wondering, like, oh, how are they going to do this? But they actually do kind of do it quite well. Mm. And I, I'll probably say this a couple of times throughout this, but they really did approach this as if it was a completely different game. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, like, mm-hmm. especially in the story stuff, actually, it really hit me. But, like, they really did approach this as if, like, right, yes, this is Final Fantasy VII, but we're not going to take everything for granted. Yeah. That people would be like, oh, yeah, this is Final Fantasy VII. Like, even going through the first bit of the game, like, it's not like they have wholesale just copied like beat for beat what happens in the game yeah like like the whole flow of like cloud cloud and avalanche going through the reactor is very different to how it is in the original game yeah and like um when we touch on the story stuff like um they do add extra wee bits and stuff yeah. that, and it, to make it feel that more fleshed out the combat though is still along those lines of kingdom hearts of final Fantasy 15 where it's still quite spectacular yeah like it looks great between the sparks flying like you know um the magic and like even just the smoothness of the animations and all Mm. it does look fantastic you also have the ability then that you can swap between your characters so there are times you're going to be forced to play as bart because there's enemies which are far away so Mm. it's kind of nice that whenever you're selecting your team you do have to kind of take into account right well i can't just have all melee fighters i'm going to have to have at least one ranged or something and then probably one healer as well um Mm. We should talk about the uh, well, yeah. Let's talk about the boss fight. It's mm-hmm. it's still pretty combat. So it is it is like the iconic boss fight from that section, like the big scorpion guard thing. scorpion. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Looks amazing. Like that's the bit that was kind of like yeah, they've like really put care and attention. And this is like they've completely redesigned how that not really completely redesigned, but they've given that enemy like a lot of personality for mm-hmm. the, like a very early game boss that like probably most people forget about within the next hour in the actual in the original game. Like, the way that it, like, scurries on the walls and stuff is just an extra yeah. layer that you, they couldn't show in mm-hmm. the original games, and it adds so much to that. And then even when you're playing, even gameplay-wise, it adds a lot because you have to swap the Barret then whenever it yeah. jumps on the walls because Cloud can't hit it. Yeah, I thought that boss fight was awesome. Um, visually, it looked fantastic as well, especially whenever it starts going, like, berserker mode and just firing off missiles left, right, yeah. and center. So um, that was the boss fight where, I, like, I really, like, I really felt the locking in the animation stuff because like you'd see him pop up saying oh shit yeah he's doing his like missile barrage yeah. but Cloud's still in the middle of his animation so I can't evade or block this yeah. so I'm just gonna have to take the hit here yeah but I think uh, they've done a very in probably what was probably the bit I imagine most people were concerned about is the gameplay and but yeah I think they've done a very good job with it and I could I couldn't fault them for the decisions they've made and the way they've implemented the new like real time combat system so the story is slightly changed. Nick, what is the story of Final Fantasy VII? <laughs> All right, strap, strap in. <laughs> We're going to be here for a while. Um, so yeah, obviously the gist of the story in this is still the same. You are Cloud. You've been. You're a mercenary. You've been hired by Avalanche to help them blow up this reactor. But they do have. They have made slight changes to it in the way Cloud acts, the way people react to Cloud, um, and even probably the biggest bit of it is like. 
the actual explosion of the reactor, they've kind of changed. Because in the first game, yes, Avalanche blows up the reactor, and yeah, they blow it up, and it fucks everything up. In this one, they don't actually blow it up. It is purposely sabotaged by Shinra. So that they can pin it on Avalanche and make yeah. it to be terror. Yeah, that is a really clever bit they add in. Is it? Oh, I think I it disagree. is. Because I really like the whole like moral conundrum of them being freedom fighters and causing this mass panic and outrage. Like I know they still kind of have to do they they'll still do that kind of because they think they did do it. But I really like the the idea of yeah they've actually really fucked shit up for people. No, because to in me the, in their, to them being like the greater good. No, because to me it's a case of they did like technically they blew it up and like it did a, like it did affect like you know the fact that the power was being sent to places. That to me is what I bet. But so it still would affect people's lives. But then the fact that. No, Shinra wanted this to be wanted them to make like make Avalanche look like the bad guys. So they made it a bigger explosion that actually caused damage to other people's property and stuff like that. But that's um, the, it's like I feel like you still get that if you do it the other way. And then you have the better moral quandary of yeah, Avalanche have actually done this. Rather than oh we're Shinra have done it but are blaming it on Avalanche. Cause but then it makes sense though, in terms of Avalanche's thing, because their whole idea is we are doing this because we want to stop them sucking the Mako out, which mm-hmm. is what they accomplished. But they're not doing it to be terrorists. They're but doing they it like in the in the original game, they literally call themselves terrorists. Like, yeah, they are like but freedom fighters. Do, but they're doing it to save the planet. They're not doing it mm-hmm. to cause damage to other yeah. people's property. But I like I feel like that's the more interesting story. To be honest, is like yes, like these are the necessary costs to reach their goals. I think it portrays Shinra as much more manipulative and sinister than in the previous game because in the pre or well, the, well previous game quote unquote like because in the la, in the other one they just kind of seem like a bunch of bumbling idiots i mean they kind of are and i think that's really funny and i'm sure there'll be still be funny moments but to me that makes them seem much more sinister now and like an actual threat so the thing about the story that i love or this thing i love so far and again it's this it's that i haven't taken it for granted that you will just know this story mm-hmm. Yeah. They have prop like they introduce the characters properly, like their attitudes, their tones. They introduce, like you know what Shinra is and how they are the bad guys and everything. At no point do they take it for granted, and I think yeah. it's really, really clever, and it's really smart because it could pot like because this game is so different from the original. This could technically get an entire new generation of Final Fantasy VII mm-hmm. fans in it. Hopefully, yeah. the other side of it is like they're very smart about the slight nods like people who have played 57 before like knew what like when cloud has like his wee moments people know what that like what that is and then like they see like the feather like when cloud sees the feather and it like dissipates in the ground like people like, who obviously have played the original will know what like that's insinuating and what's that a reference to yeah but even if you haven't played it it's still a really smart like oh what the fuck's going on like why is cloud having these like yeah. freakouts it's an enigma yeah and you're, you're gonna play further on so you understand it mm. yeah and like the, it's clever because yeah like it's whenever a question is passed, they kick in. It's almost like yeah. the memories are being played, so we're having the answer. Um, but, like, the main thing was kind of all, especially with this, is, like, in the original one, the character of Cloud, specifically, was always kind of hard to make out. Hmm. Like, because he, although he did speak, he didn't speak as much as the other characters. Yeah. And, like, obviously they didn't have facial animations and, like, a lot of his characteristic was very nonchalant. So I think they've done a really good job in getting the tone of Cloud across properly, which is he is kind of this silent, cocky prick. See, like, I that I feel like this is, the th- like, the early part of Cloud is very well defined. Like, even in the original, I think they did a good job of getting around, like, yeah, this is just a job to him. Yeah. He doesn't actually care about the cause. He's in it for the money and because he feels obliged to help Tifa. Mm-hmm. It's going to be later on as they get towards, like, the Eris stuff and, like, his later on, like, his mental collapse. Is, like, he figures out who the fuck he is. Yeah. I think that's probably the more interesting bit of how they portray that as with, like, what he was before, like, a very silent protagonist. Yeah. But I think they've done a good job as well. Those, like, yeah. The bit with, um, with Jesse, for example, like, mm-hmm. it, shows, it shows, like, yes, okay, he's a dick, but he still doesn't actually want to see these guys get hurt, which yeah. is why he kind of... And he's a ladies' man. He is a ladies' man. He play a player. Bang the fuck out of Jesse. <laughs> Shoot your shot, young warrior, Cloud. Someone, someone make that hot coffee mod. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think like it's... 
I think they've done, yeah, and like even Barrett, I think they did a good job with Barrett as well because although Barrett is portrayed as a big, like, intimidating character, mm-hmm. you just have this comedic side as well. Yeah. Where there's like big outbursts. And like mm-hmm. that scene in the elevator, I think, portrays Barrett really, yeah. really well. And even um, like, and then like you do, we'll get the other side of Barrett was like as you go back to the slums and you see Barrett with his family and stuff like that. Yeah. But no, I think it's, they've done, I think they've done a very good job with how they've portrayed, like, even like Jesse Biggs and Wedge very minor characters in the grand scheme of things i think they've done a good job of a sticking like very closely and like how you'd expect them to look like yeah. they haven't full haul went and like redesigned any characters yeah but also like making them seem like like bigger characters they actually have a they character are. Now. yeah they actually are characters jesse's just gushing for cloud yeah she um full-on fucking pussy she waterfall she is a thirsty bitch in this. yes very thirsty bitch someone described it to me as like this feels like what you think Final Fantasy VII actually was compared to what it, or what you what you think Final Fantasy VII was when you played it originally. It was, it was like this was what Final Fantasy VII mm. looked like in your imagination. Yeah, like this is like when when people in twenty twenty look back and think about oh when I play Final Fantasy VII this is what it looked like. Yeah, in their head. Yeah. Also, like they did like really neat little details. Like you see in Cloud's sword, like he has the actual materia. Yeah, which I imagine will change as you play the game, which is like a really neat touch. And Bard is the same. Like you see the wee green orb in his gun. Did you? Uh, I don't. It only ever happened for me once. Mm-hmm. So I finished a fight with Bart and he did the victory like taunt. Yeah, da, da, yeah, da, 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 yeah. yeah. And this it's, is funny. He's like, da, 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 da. It's, uh, okay. This is maybe a little on the nose, but okay. So let's talk about future things, Nick. So okay. At the end of it, they had that wee montage, kind of showing mm. what we can expect in the rest of it, including Lady Cloud. <laughs> yes. We well, yeah, um, already knew that was, that's was that been in some yeah, of the trailers already. Yeah. So, although it does answer a lot of questions, there's probably a couple of things that are still unanswered. So, for example, will we have an open world bit, or is it going to be a lot more linear? Because at the end of the day, they are dividing us into episodes. Yes. So... I would be very surprised if there was any concept of the unopened world mm. beyond like, oh, maybe the slums is like a big area or like when you're in that bit where you go to the Dawn's place, like maybe that is a bigger area than usual. Yeah. But in terms of a traditional open world, no. I- and then also on top of that, they came out recently and said that Red 13 will not be a playable yes. character. So yes, they said he'll not be a playable character, but he will be in your party at t- or he'll be like a guest character in your party yeah. because they didn't think it was there would be enough time to essentially fully flesh out his like how he would play and how he would fight. Yeah. So um, I sit there and I wonder. So does that mean that the only characters we'll be able to play as will be the humans? So yeah. for example, will Kate Sith not be a playable character, but no, will also be like a I, guest I, character? I think by the time we get to the next one, I think Red will be a playable character. But like considering like where this game goes up to, you have to remember like Red's in it for like a boss fight. Like you get Red and then you escape Midgar. Like there's yeah. maybe like two boss fights, a boss fight with Red, like as you go down the elevator. So like I don't blame them for not having him as a playable character. But dude, like overall, I'm fucking stoked for this. <laughs> Yeah, so, like, after playing this, are you more or less excited for the release of the main game in May? I would say I'm probably... I'd say I'm probably more excited, definitely. Like, I would say I'm still disappointed that it's an episodic thing. Hmm. Like, but that's just a per. I'm sure a lot of people probably are, to be honest. I'd rather it just come out as one big collection. That, that is that is the biggest question weighing on my mind, is what is what is the gap between these games? Like, it's taken them this long, like, to get this one out. It's like, this was announced two, maybe three years ago. And it's coming right, right at the end of a console generation. So, do we see them re-release this part of it first? Or do we see them just being like, alright, now we've got the first one out, we've got the system down and easier, and like how, what is the cadence for these releases? Yeah, Are they going to be released? Like, as I'd say, maybe not a typical episodic game, but will there be a faster release, like maybe a yearly thing? Or are we still looking at these three, four, or five year release cycles? Yeah. I'm just uh, I'm not sure if you know, but a quick question. So like, at the end of the demo, it's like, oh, you can purchase this. Mm-hmm. So if I purchase that, is that me it's buying this, all the... No, it's this part. Seriously? I, th- that is the part of this that is also really, like, scummy to me. Is yeah. There is nowhere on the packaging or anything that says this is, like, part one or episode season, one yeah, of like, a bigger game, essentially. Like, this should, like, it should be like, called, they are like, treat, like, they are treating this as a standalone game, and I imagine they will treat the remakes almost as, like, sequels. 
I think I, I that, and it's unfortunate because after playing the demo, I am excited to play this. Yeah. But the whole release schedule and the marketing and stuff like that feels like a very big shadow still hanging over this game. It seems unnecessary. Yeah, like the fact that we could play this and then probably still not see the end of it for like five, ten years is a worrying thought. Yeah, like, do you think it was just a case of we just want to try to get this out as soon as possible so we'll break it up into bite-sized pieces or something? Like, it's, it's difficult to know because, like, obviously, I'm not denying how difficult it is to make a video game these days. Yeah. We've seen big, big companies try to make a video game and royally fuck it up. So it's difficult to know whether this was the plan from the outset or if this was always... or if things changed. But if they're putting as much work into, like, each individual area of Midgar as they are, I assume that this was always the plan. Mm. I like look at the release material they've put out for this so far in the fact that not they've never they have never even shown stuff from later on in the game. So I reckon from a very early stage they knew this would only be Midgar. Pants, thank you for hanging out and talking with me. Yes, not a problem. I say let's let's go wield our big ass swords and stab people right in the insides. I'll cut off your arm and stick a gun there. Ah, uh, and you're gonna make me black as well. I feel like that's crossing a line. (laughs) (laughs) See you next time. See you.